Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is inspired by Valentine's Day and I'm going to be talking about my favorite love stories in literature. And these are not only love stories that are general romances, where romance is the main plot of the story, but these are also different kinds of love stories between friends and family and romantic relationships and all different kinds of romances so that hopefully there is something for every kind of reader, whether you like reading primarily romance or not. These are also kind of inspired by certain romance tropes that I tried to implement in a few of these recommendations as well, so I'm so excited to talk to you about these books, but I'm even more excited to tell you guys about the jewelry brand that I'm collaborating with for this video. And that is Ana Luisa. I have a box of their pieces that I did gift myself for Valentine's Day. I am also wearing them as well, and every time I get new pieces from them, I just fall more and more and more in love with their brand and I'm so excited that I get to work with them and tell you guys about them. And they have an amazing sale going on for Valentine's Day where you buy one and get another for 50% off, which is incredible. And I cannot recommend either gifting yourself something for Valentine's Day or gifting someone else something. They are just amazing and I can't wait to show you guys the pieces that I picked out. Some amazing things about Ana Luisa, just to let you guys know, is that they do ship internationally they have a 365 day warranty and they are carbon neutral and they really care a lot about the environment and they are just an overall incredible brand that cares about the planet, cares about their pieces. I just love them so much. So anyway, I will tell you guys the pieces that I got for this video and I will put the names on the screen because I can never remember the names, but I will put the names on the screen and I will show you them. They are so beautiful. I'm so excited. <laughs> so the first two pieces do go together and it is is this necklace that I'm wearing. Not this one. This one I got previously from Ana Luisa, which is in my other video that I did with them, and also the earrings in my first hole. So they are the same green stone, if you guys can see, and they are just so beautiful. So I will do close-ups, but as you can see, look at how gorgeous that green is. I also love gold. Gold is my favorite type of jewelry metal. Here are the earrings. I love green jewelry and green with my eyes just because my eyes are green. I really like how it brings out the color of my eyes. So those are the first two pieces that I picked out. They don't come together but they do go together if that makes sense and I just love how they look when you wear them at the same time. You guys know how much I am obsessed with gold hoops with a dangle. We have more gold hoops with a dangle. Um, I just love a gold hoop. I don't know why I am obsessed with them. And that leads me to the second pair of earrings that I picked out, which are, I think, my favorite earrings that I own now. Like, they are gorgeous. They are these amazing, like, rope hoops with gemstones around one of the, like, parts of the rope. I love how they are really delicate, but at the same time, you could really also dress them up and make them very fancy, but you could also wear them with a more casual outfit and dress up the outfit. Um, so they can either be fancy or you can dress them up or down, which I love when you can do that with jewelry. I really feel like jewelry can just elevate an outfit or elevate your appearance. I feel like whenever I put on earrings or a necklace or jewelry, just in general, I feel so much more confident in a way, and I feel like that's the same thing how I feel with fragrance as well. And of course, beauty, fashion, makeup, like anything is to really make you feel good in your skin and make you feel confident and happy and that's what I love about jewelry. I just feel more myself when I have jewelry on. Also, you guys know, whenever I talk about Ana Luisa, I always have to talk about these bags that they come in. I love these jewelry pouches, bags. They are so beautiful. They're magnetic. They're just the perfect size. Anyway, so then the last piece that I picked out is actually two necklaces that come together. So they come like this. So they are individual, but they are meant to be stacked one on top of the other. And I'll just show you close up. So this one has a little piece of plastic to protect the little pearl, which I really love. Again, it shows how much they care about their packaging and their products. So we have this really delicate gold chain with a pearl pendant, as well as 
also another delicate gold chain with some green beads that I just think are so beautiful. Again, I love green. I love dainty jewelry. They're just so wearable. I feel like you can really elevate an outfit. So like I said before, I have been a fan of Ana Luisa for months now and they never get worn or tarnish and they are just such high quality pieces for a really affordable price and like I said they are having a Valentine's Day sale buy one get one for 50% off and the best part is if you are seeing this video after their Valentine's Day sale ends I do still have a 20% off discount in my description box so if you guys click on the link in my description box you can get 20% off but don't forget to try and get your pieces with the buy one get one 50% off sale because that is just amazing and I can't recommend their jewelry enough. So thank you so much Ana Luisa for collaborating with me on this video and thank you so much for inspiring this video because we are going to now be talking about the amazing love stories in literature that I love and I think you will love. I want to talk to you about all of them, so I'm not going to be giving you a synopsis. I'm just going to be giving you general tropes that can be found in the book and how they are different kinds of romances. So let's get started because we have many books to get through. So speaking of romance tropes, a lot of them are inspired by classic literature. As you guys know, I am a huge classic literature fan and reader, and what I love is reading the originals so that you can understand where the tropes came from. And a lot of romance tropes came from the incredible, the incomparable Jane Austen. So this is a Penguin English Library edition of Jane Austen's complete novels. So if if you are interested in reading Jane Austen, I think Valentine's Day, the season of love, is the perfect time to do so. Enemies to Lovers in particular is in Pride and Prejudice. I think Pride and Prejudice really is the first Enemies to Lovers romance. Pride and Prejudice and Emma are my favorites, but you really can't go wrong with any Jane Austen. Another author that really never disappoints, I feel she discusses really difficult topics in her books and it's more of a modern take so we have Jane Austen who is a very classical take on romance and then a more modern take on relationships as a whole because her books are very romantic but they're more about the nitty-gritty of relationships and that is Sally Rooney in particular my favorite is Normal People if you have not read Normal People if you have not read Sally Rooney please do so. Normal People is an incredible book. It's about two characters, Connell and Marianne, who are at different social statuses and how those change when they go from school to university. I love Normal People. It is my favorite Sally Rooney, and again, you really can't go wrong in my eyes with Sally Rooney. Now we're switching gears. The next book is very different, and that is The Love Between a Dog and its owner, and that is Flush by Virginia Woolf. I love this book so much, so we are following the perspective of Flush, who is a Cocker Spaniel, and his perspective on his relationship with his owner, who is Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and this is Virginia Woolf's take on Flush's biography, and I loved it so much. I read it last year. I do have a Cavalier and Cocker Spaniel. Her name is Willow. I love her so much, and so it was so wonderful to read about the relationship between a dog and its owner. So when you think about love stories, you usually think about them in a romantic sense, but you can also think about love stories in different instances as well, in different situations, and what better love story than the love story between a dog and its owner? So, flush. It's amazing. It'll make you cry. I will just give you that warning. The end. Just, just watch out for the end. <laughs> My next recommendation is for friends to lovers, but it's really childhood friends to lovers, and that is in Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I won't tell you who the people are because I don't want to spoil it, but this has an incredible romance plot. There's also kind of a love triangle in here. There, I mean, there is a love triangle in here, but it doesn't feel corny or forced because I feel like sometimes love triangles can feel corny and forced, but... I love Never Let Me Go. It was my favorite book of last year. I can't stop talking about it. I keep I keep telling you guys about it. So yes, Never Let Me Go. Please read it. It is amazing. And the relationships in this book are 
fantastic and heartbreaking and this book made me cry more than I think any other book on the face of the earth. So it's devastating, it's amazing, it's just everything and I love it so much. Speaking of love triangles, another love triangle that I love that also doesn't feel very corny is in Yevgeny Onegin by Alexander Pushkin. This was my favorite book of 2021 and it remains to be the most beautiful book I have ever read. The writing in this book literally feels like magic on the page. It just feels like written music in words, like a song in words, if that makes any sense, because we do have rhyme and meter and rhythm, because this is a story in verse, and it is just gorgeous and stunning, and we have unrequited love, we have a love triangle, we have a lot of romance tropes in this book, um, and it is just beautifully, beautifully, beautifully written, and I love it very much. The next book recommendation is for the trope of a jilted bride, a bride that was left at the altar, and who is, I think, the most iconic jilted bride? And that is Mrs. Havisham from Great Expectations, or Miss Havisham, because she did not get married. Miss Havisham is a woman who was jilted at the altar and then remained in her wedding dress and stopped the clock at the exact moment that she was left at the altar and just remained in her wedding dress. The wedding cake was never cut, Everything is covered in cobwebs, she is covered in cobwebs, and she just stopped time the moment that she was left at the altar. And is that not the most iconic and crazy and dramatic thing, but I love it. It's so great. All the relationships in here are really interesting and I loved to read about, so Great Expectations is just such an incredible story. Next we have For the Trope of Pen Pals, and that is The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. It is an epistolary novel, so it is written entirely in letters, and so we have the relationships that are in this book, whether they're the friendships or romantic relationships, relationships, they are all explored through the letters that they send to one another, and I think it's just such a beautiful way to establish relationships and friendships, and to explore that as a reader through their letters, I just think is such a unique perspective, and I really enjoyed this book so much. I haven't read it for a few years, but when I did read it, I loved it, and so of course I have to recommend it. It is just a really sweet, heartwarming, comforting book. For the trope of unrequited love, who better than Fyodor Dostoevsky? This is my favorite of his books, well, one of my favorites, and that is White Knights. It is an absolutely stunning short story, kind of novella, longer short story about unrequited love, and that's really all that I want to say because it is short, I don't want to spoil anything. On the back it says, two devastating Russian stories of solitude, unrequited love, and depravity from beyond the grave. This also has another story in it, which I haven't read yet, and that is Bobak. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but White Knights, as you can see from all of my sticky notes, is my very favorite Dostoevsky story. It is beautiful. If you are new to Dostoevsky, I highly recommend reading White Knights. I think it's a great introduction. This is also number 118 in the Penguin Little Black Classics series if you are interested in this specific edition. For the trope of forbidden love, what better book than Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, my favorite book on the face of the earth. There are so many different kinds of relationships in this book, whether they are romantic or not, and this book is really, I think, the book of life. I always think about how Leo Tolstoy just captured life and put it into this novel, and and there are incredible love stories in this book. There are some that are forbidden, there are some that are not forbidden, there is partial unrequited love, partial childhood friends to lovers. There are just so many different kinds of relationships in this book that you really can't go wrong. There, I think, is something for everybody in this book. For the trope of soulmates, I have The Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller, and I first watched the movie with Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood, and I fell in love with the movie. It really had that kind of soulmates, star-crossed lovers feeling to it, and the 
the book as well. It's just so beautiful. So then I read the book and I just loved it. Their connection, the two main characters' connections with one another is gorgeous. It's also kind of a forbidden love as well. And again, it's just beautifully written, beautifully explored, and you feel so deeply for the characters and their connection. It just feels so raw and tangible and beautiful, and I loved it. For the trope of a character experiencing their first love, we have the book First Love by Ivan Turgenev. Now this is a fantastic book exploring our main character's experience with falling in love for the first time, as well as how love can really manipulate the people that it affects. And it's just a really interesting perspective into how relationships can be manipulated and how it's seen in the perspective of a young boy experiencing love for the first time. It is beautifully written, very approachable, very short, and if you are interested in reading Turgenev for the first time, I highly recommend starting your Turgenev journey with First Love. Speaking of different kinds of love, a book that captures the love between two brothers so beautifully is a book of letters by Vincent van Gogh and and in particular his letters to his brother Teo. They had a beautiful bond and the way that Vincent writes to Teo and their connection to one another and how they really truly just love each other so much, just that bond between brothers is beautifully captured in the way that they write to one another. They talk about all different kinds of aspects of their lives. I love Vincent van Gogh, I love learning more about his life, and I think it's so beautiful that we have his letters to read because of course he never intended anybody else to read these letters, so it's kind of infringing on his privacy if you really think about it, but it's so beautiful and I love the way that he writes about his artwork and his life to to Teo in particular and the way that Teo writes to Vincent and how they were really there for one another through a lot of hard parts of their lives and I just think a sibling relationship is really so beautiful to read about and the fact that this is not fictional as well is just gorgeous. The next one is one of my favorite comfort reads and it is one of my favorite comfort relationships. I don't want to say between who and who, but that is Anne of Green Gables. This is the first book in the series, but Anne's relationship with one character in particular is one of my favorite love stories to read in all of literature and I love it so much. It brings so much comfort. Anne of Green Gables, the whole series, is one of my favorites. If you have never read the Anne of Green Gables series, I highly recommend you do so if you are in the mood for beautiful nature writing, beautiful characters, and a lovely, sweet, heartwarming love story that develops quite slowly over time. It's kind of, again, like sort of enemies to lovers, if you think about it, and then friends to lovers. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just so sweet. Anne of Green Gables is such a beautiful series, and I cannot recommend it enough. It is one of my absolute favorites. The next one is inspired by the trope of a fairy tale retelling, but it's not necessarily a fairy tale retelling, it is a Greek myth retelling, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. If you have yet to read this book, I feel like at this point so many people have read it because it was very popular on social media and TikTok and everything, but if you have not read it, you have to read it. It is so beautiful, so devastating. It is a retelling of Achilles and Patroclus in Greek mythology, and the way that Madeline Miller writes it, the way that she writes their relationship, the way that she writes their love story, it is absolutely gorgeous and just everything about this book is so stunning. I am definitely in need of a reread of it because I read it before it got very popular, which it was really exciting to have read it and then see everyone fall in love with it as well, and I definitely am in need of a reread. I love that we have more of a modern take at this classic tale. I think that that is always so exciting to see as a modern reader who also loves classics. The next one is for the trope of kind of like a vacation romance, like they meet on vacation and then they fall in love. Um, and that is A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. This is one of my favorite Forster novels as well as I have it right here, Maurice or Morris by E.M. Forster. This one is a bit more 
hard-hitting and devastating about two young men who fall in love and are trying to figure out their relationship in a time where same-sex relationships were illegal in England. And so this is really hard-hitting, but this one is a lot more soft-hitting. <laughs> is that a term? Soft-hitting? Um, where we are following two characters who do meet on vacation and then their relationship develops from there. It is beautifully written. It is a perfect book if you are in the mood for a really like summery, happy, comforting read and just the nature elements of this book really come to life and it is just a really enchanting, beautiful, scenic book and the relationships in here are also just fantastic and this is one of my favorite one of my very, very favorite books, especially one of my favorite E.M. Forster books, but also Morris or Maurice as well is amazing, just a bit more hard-hitting than this one. The next one is another one of my favorites, and that is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. I adore this book with every fiber of my being, oh my goodness. Um, the relationship in this book is between a young boy and a graduate student that stays with his family for the summer. So we have kind of summer romance tropes going on. Again, partially devastating, partially first love experience where it's more infatuation and discovering yourself and your sexuality through the relationship and there's just so many elements of this book that I love so much. The way that it's written feels like poetry, though it's not poetic and it's not written in verse. It just feels like music when you read it and I am once again really in need of a reread. I read this book for the first time either in 2017 or 2018 and it has remained one of my very very favorites and I just adore this story so much and I highly recommend you read it if you haven't. The movie adaptation is also gorgeous and stunning and one of my favorites and you really can't go wrong with Call Me By Your Name if you're in the mood for a very romantic, lusty, passionate story set beautifully in the Italian countryside in summer. It's just gorgeous. The next one is my favorite Shakespeare comedy, and that is A Midsummer Night's Dream. A Midsummer Night's Dream is about kind of a love square. Um, it's four characters who under a spell of the juice of a flower, they kind of intertwine their relationships and they fall in love with the wrong people. And it is just such a fantastic and funny play. This is my favorite movie adaptation of it, so I would recommend either reading it while you watch the movie or watch the movie and then read the book just because I feel like with certain Shakespeare plays I think it can really benefit your experience because of course these plays were meant to be seen and not only read. I love this story so much. It is so wacky and quirky and funny and love in itself is just like the main plot of this book. Um, it says on the back, the course of true love never did run smooth. I highly recommend it if you're newer to Shakespeare. I think this is quite an approachable Shakespeare, but I would recommend watching the movie adaptation first. The next two I have are under the genre of the gothic romance, which could be a bunch of tropes, and that is Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights by the Bronte sisters Charlotte and Emily. Also Anne, I do love Anne. I have only read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre are my two favorites. Wuthering Heights could also be seen kind of as a love triangle, as well as sort of a revenge trope, like if I can't have you, nobody will, something like that. And then Jane Eyre is kind of similar, a little bit different, sort of love triangle, sort of not really, but there are so many elements to these books that I love so much. Jane Eyre is the classic that got me into classics, so if you are newer to classic literature, I would highly recommend reading Jane Eyre. And the last book I have to recommend to you guys is Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jodrowski. I love this book so much. This is about the relationship between two young men in a time where they have very different political views and different political standings, and it's kind of a mix between historical fiction and political intrigue as well as a coming-of-age 
learning about your sexuality type of relationship. It is beautifully, beautifully written, beautifully explored. I loved how Tomasz Jodorowsky really wove together their relationship and how it was affected by what was going on in the world at the time. The writing is gorgeous. It does kind of have like a Call Me By Your Name type of vibe to it. So if you love Call Me By Your Name, I really feel like you would love Swimming in the Dark as well. These are all of the recommendations. Holy moly, I can't believe I just went through all of those. Oh my gosh, let's count them because I actually want to see how many there are. They're gonna fall. How much you want to bet? Oh my god, that was so close. How did that not fall? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh my gosh. I just gave you guys 21 book recommendations inspired by love. So there you have it, 21 book recommendations inspired by love. I hope that you were able to find something that maybe piqued your interest. I am not really a romance genre reader, but I do love love stories, and I love reading love stories in books that are not primarily romances. So if you are that kind of reader as well, I hope that you were able to find something here, and I would love to know what your favorite love stories are so definitely let me know in a comment and again I want to give a huge 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 thank you to Ana Luisa for collaborating with me on this video and inspiring this video so definitely check out the buy one get one 50% off sale that they're having for Valentine's Day or if the sale has ended then I do have that 20% off link in my description that you guys can get 20% off a piece of Ana Luisa jewelry which again they are just so stunning love them so much and very very happy Happy with my new pieces. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am wishing you a wonderful Valentine's Day filled with lots of love. I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading!